Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at Brick Fair Virginia 2023. Today we're taking a look at a fantastic Halo collaborative layout. We've got one of the builders here with me. If you want to introduce yourself and give us an overview of this. Yeah, definitely. So my name is Ben Brickson on Instagram. And I got four, or sorry, three other guys here. Daniel Taco Bricks, Sam, Uncle Sammy Poo, and then Tanner Detroitica. So what our build is, it's Zeta Halo which is the Halo ring that takes place in Halo Infinite. And rather than capturing a battle scene, which you see a lot of between Banished or Covenant forces and then human life, this build focuses on just the landscape itself and then keeping a pe how the peaceful Marines are operating in kind of their time off. So out of combat, what does the world look like? So we'll start over here with the river section on our left from Uncle Sammy Boo, and let's bring him over here and then get him going. Perfect. Right, Sounds good. So tell us what you brought here. Uh, I brought my river right here, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I brought my river here and um, Ben, uh, my good friend right over here, uh, helped me out with the water and um, as you can see I uh, did some of the ocean floor and the flying fish as you can see. That's a great technique there because it kind of lets you put stuff underneath the water there, that's cool. Yes, yes. The, um, I got the idea after seeing the new avatar sets that had a uh, transparent clear uh, clip piece. So I wanted to use that for this because I had seen no one else do it. So I uh, got this off of BrickLink and then the rest is history. Um, I also was responsible for uh, most of the figures here. As you can see, um, over here we have a uh, brief scene. It's a, uh, a briefing scene. It's a command post with a hollow table. Tanner did that. Um, it lights up. As you can see, it's a little faint right now, but uh, it does glow. Um, it's a recreation of the this area right here, the beam emitter and the cliff. And as you can see, um, the two orange dots, those are supposed to be uh, the banish right there. So this uh, build is kind of like a has like a calm before the storm sort of thing. As you can see, the banished are um, spying on the UNSC, they're spying on the humans, plotting to attack. But as you can see, um, the humans have an inkling about the banished on the uh, cliffside. So right here we got Master Chief, the man, the myth, the legend, and um, some Marines here, a Special Forces guy in the dark red shirt. Then over here, we got this um, Quonset hut that was made by my good friend Daniel over here. This and guy looks like he's ready for action. Yes, he is uh, doing jumping jacks right now. And as you can see, he is sweating up a storm, I guess because, uh, well, uh, he's doing it in full gear, which is not a good idea. And that guy right there with the muscles, he's working out, right? Perfect. So that's uh He's pumping iron. So that's some of the figures there. We'll take a look at some more of the, the build then as well. Oh, yeah. Um, Daniel here, uh, yes, he also did the crevice right here. And as you can see behind the hut, there is a little uh, Easter egg, a little nod to uh, Kuba's, I, I believe it's called, right? Kuba's Studios uh, Battle of the Brick video with the flag right there. Well, if you want to tell us more about that then. All right. So, hi guys, my name's Daniel, better known as Taco Bricks Online. So, as you'll see here, this is my section. I did the clone set and the little base camp area. So, as Sam was saying, um, when I was brought into the, uh, the collab, we were talking about like what we, what we need for the UNSC base. So, looking through like just reference pictures and images from the video game uh, of Halo Infinite, uh, I decided to do you know, this clone set. It's really cool. Uh, and it looks tricky to build out Lego, and that makes me want to build it even more because I'm always interested in a challenge of doing something kind of different with the brick. And so the main part of the clone set, if you look at the actual pictures of it from the game, it's all curved um, walls, pretty much. And as you know with Lego, you can't really do curves because everything is square or built on a square. So to do so, I actually, you know, I, I think I can pull off the walls a little bit here. So actually all these walls are their own little panels and they're all held together by droid arms and lightsaber bars and they're all just segmented together and just these little parts that all just fit together and then they just fit in nice and snug. And you have the net 
netting the foliage on here, covering it just to kind of hide some of the little, little missing, like little imperfections in it. But it came out great. I'm very happy with it. And of course, gotta have an angle too to make it look even cooler. <laughs> um, so then I added in. So since. Uh, when I joined in the collab, I joined in a little later than everyone else. They had everyone had already started, so I joined in a little later. And Tanner had this awesome hollow table, and they were decide, trying to figure out where should we put it. Like Daniel, we want to put it in your, maybe your area since you got the base camp. I said I have the perfect idea, so I made this whole little like landing. I looked at some images, and nothing really like this in Halo Infinite. But I saw some like landing pad sections. I thought, you know, I can take some inspiration from that and kind of put my own little twist. And I made something that looks like that would fit in Halo Infinite with this landing pad sort of um, design that they had and made it just to a little base camp area to where they can have the hollow table, a little netting area. It's like a little protection, camouflage and all that. And I knew a lot of this build was going to be landscape. And that's one of my favorite things to do with LEGO is doing landscape. So I wanted to do some of my best rock work I've done yet. I'm really proud of how this came out. I added in a lot of snot techniques in here just to get some of the plants to come out in here to make it look more full of life and nature like you see in the games and just adding in some nice little curved slope pieces in here too to really just kind of make that mountain look more natural and look more rocky, look more cool to put it, I guess. And uh, the trees you see here were done by Ben. He did an amazing job with these trees, and it really helped to build out you know, the mock itself. He also did these lights that you're seeing around in my area to you know, give more some of that militaristic look to um, the build itself. And as uh, you know, Sam did the figures too, and so it all just came together really, really nice. I'm really happy that he invited me to be part of this build. So speaking of Ben, I'm going to pass it off to him, and he's going to tell you guys about this super awesome beam there. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, hey, Ben Brixton again here. And so Daniel passed off. We're looking now at the beam emitter. So with each, doing each of our four sections here, one thing we wanted to make sure that we had to make it all coherent is match up the elevation of the landscape profiles. So a lot of making sure it's good and then actually base landscape off of that. Some minor tweaks here and there. But then that feeds into the beam emitter. So across the halo rings, you find these forerunner alien structures which is kind of like a super tall tower. I'm not quite sure what exactly they do, honestly, but it's an iconical, or sorry, iconic kind of shape you see around, even though like, the geometry for these vary per game. But it's basically a platform on the center, two ramps leading up opposite sides, flanking the main structure, and then these two beams, one about a half uh, the proportion of the taller one, and then we incorporated lights into this to get the glow up. You don't see them active in the games too much, but it gives another level of depth, especially using the reverse of waterfall lights that can then move up. There's a half strand of light, so it doesn't cover the full spire, but the smaller one refracts onto it, which helps increase the bottom of it. Now we got a few lights in the doors around, as I'm sure you guys have noticed, like the hollow table with campfires, flickering stuff. Those elements are primarily brick stuff, which is a great lighting company for anyone looking to get a start in that. And as you can see across the beam emitter, as we work our way up, we've got Remember Reach spray paint on there classic iconic kind of message from the game Halo Reach after the loss of Noble Team. But moving up the top of this, there are Marines. Yeah, you kind of see them gearing up there, making sure the outpost is nice and safe, making sure weapons are prepped in case anything were to happen. As a few other guys are walking towards the opposite side. We got a nice gang of Marines, some having a drink, happy little butterfly. And then of course playing poker, cards, having some snacks. So one guy's had a big one, the other two are not doing so hot. <laughs> Sam, Uncle Sammy Pooh, really put in an effort to give all of these Marines character, uniqueness throughout the build. To make sure everyone's, everyone's a unique person rather than just soldier, soldier, soldier. So it was a big effort of his going through that, get all these custom figs using various painted brick arms, tarts, which is the primary custom element that's around here. And so we'll pass this off to Tanner here, the final hill section. So he's got this massive mound that utilizes the same door technique. So he created one of these four runner doors that I then replicated on the bottom of the beam emitter and the top. I'll pass it off to him to discuss more technique. Oh, thanks. Well, hi. Um, I made this section here at the end, and uh, I was really trying to um, build for the, the, AFO, the, the AFOLs who are masters of terrain, which I am not. Um, so I, I, oh, I, This looks pretty spectacular to me here. This is pretty amazing. Thanks. There's some people I really look up to who are just amazing at kind of the bubbly type of rock work and things. Um, 
And I tried to incorporate that a little bit um, without making it too kind of edgy the way that Mixel Joint builds can be, you know? Um, there's so many great people out there, and, and I tried to make things good for them. These guys were a terrific crew to work with. I'm so happy. This is my first real big collab like this, and uh, um, these guys just made me everything mesh very well. Would you like to hear about the structure of the cliff or anything like that? For sure, that'd be fantastic, yeah. Sure, so um, I looked online. I knew I wanted good angles early on, and um, there's some LEGO uh, modular building that has a nearly perfect um, uh, right triangle, and there's actually no hinge part, so this whole cliff is at 45 degrees. Um, to, to the viewer, um, and it's a legal connection in a Lego set. It's just plopped down on a couple studs that are the right distance apart. Um, so the hexagons are not my technique originally. I had to modify very heavily some techniques by a guy named Peter Itzes. I don't know if I said that right, but he's a Flickr guy who just went nuts in about 2014 or 15 and posted about eight brilliant hexagon designs. So if you'd like, could I lift up a hexagon here and show you the inside? Sure. Cool. So he came up with the original um, hinge plate configuration. The rest I had to figure out on my own. Um, but uh, they're, they're somewhat sturdy, and uh, I love Halo Infinite's art direction with these. It's like they always belonged in Halo, you know? Um, but uh, so what yeah. are some of those parts inside there again, real quick, if you flip that over? Sure, so you can see uh, right there, I don't know what you call these uh, modified one-by-one -one plates, um, but they're connected to jumper plates, which are connected to these. I, again, I had to modify his technique quite a bit, um, but that's the basis of the of the connection. So they're all facing outwards. They meet at the correct angles. Um, if we open up the top here, Nan and Zhang, another brilliant builder who I've, I've looked up to for years, his new Hashima collab had this technique, um, which I used to fill in the center, but I also had to clip on these to match the middle. I mean, there's some weird geometry going on there, you know? <laughs> Uh -huh. Very complex, but looks fantastic here. I especially like the way you've melded kind of the natural landscape with the gray sections, and it just looks very nice there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. These end up at a 15-degree angle to the front because this is at 45, um, and these, you know, go off at, at, at 30. Um, really messy back, you know, build in there. Um, this, this section right here, which took an inordinate amount of time, um, is four and one half plate wide. So, I mean, that alone tells you how awful things are inside. Um, but the other thing I just want to kind of, you know, spotlight um, before it's over is the, the Halo 3, uh, the Easter egg with the little monkey family from the, first, uh, from the first level. It's this delightful little Easter egg. And they have a teddy bear in the game. But um, this is our friend Alex Sigfig. He's very short, he jokes. Um, so he jokes that he's, you know, this tiny little person. So we, we threw him in so he could be here in spirit, you know. <laughs> And then what else do you have kind of on top of this section that kind of, you know, fills out the top here? Right, so um, uh, I've never played Infinite, but the Banished Aliens, they're like the, I don't know, next Covenant type, you know, aliens. Um, we've got lighting from Ben worked out, but they've got all these fun screenshots in game of them, like gathering food. You run in their camps and they've got bananas. I used plumes to accomplish that. Um, watermelons, which I hope deliver. You know, I'm not certain about it, but they've all these funny screenshots in game of watermelons and bananas on spikes, and them roasting chickens and stuff that they've caught. Um, this, again, is a holdover from the old games. I think they have slightly different shields in Infinite, but um, I have to also give credit that this one is from, a, uh, from another old Flickr builder. Um, but my original uh, alien design's up here, um, and it was, it was a ton of fun to figure all these little problems out over a long time. It turned out fantastic, so excellent work here. Thank you so much for, for all the effort you put into this part. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was a ton of fun. And, and thank you guys for speaking with us today. It's just a joy. I mean, the, the whole collab is amazing. I wanted to come back to the tower section here and ask you a little bit more about kind of the stability inside there. You can see it, it gets pretty narrow there. So what's kind of holding yeah. this whole thing up? Yeah, of course. So what we've got inside there, it's a tech, Technic actually, and it's not attached on there. So there's the, essentially a female connection of a square outside of that. And then you've got one plate, a Technic brick, and then a Technic, or sorry, a tile on there and so that diameter fits inside of the reverse of that and that's what incorporates up in the spire. There's a little conduit chase behind it that attaches down into the base. So on the one strand of lights you've got the whole beam emitter, the waterfall lights reversed, the side dot lights that'll blow, blow up that blue, the doorway and then this frontal interstitials part connected to a battery pack in the base. And so once you drop that on, thread through the little plug, plug that into the board up ahead, 
it'll then clear up and do that whole right, or sorry, left tall spire here. The short spire opposite of this, which looks like the batteries may have died actually. So anyways, there was a battery pack in there. So in spirit, that's reflecting light as well. But that's also the same kind of technique where this whole kind of thing, we'll just grab it here. It's self-contained in its own kind of area. Let me kind of pop this off, get a look inside or so. What the rubber band is doing is keeping this kind of plate just pulled back on there. There's a hinge that you'll see kind of pivoted in here. And so once we do that, just keeping it tight in tension, we'll kind of just lift this guy up. You can kind of see all sorts of beautiful rainbows of snot, a couple lights, we got a dead battery pack in there. And that's what kind of folds this back. So that hinge placement is what then allows it to notch it down there, marry this little connection nicely. And then a few of the little bars angled off of that one by two plates and that's what we just pop onto a rubber band. Not doing anything structurally, just pulling it back in tension and then just cap it off there. And so once we get this guy, there we go, capped on there. This is the, this is the base of that. So that reverse of it, just two bricks tall. You've got the plate, Technic brick, another plate and tile. And then that will just notch onto the first connection, which it just slides into that system. If I can get that going here, where are we looking? All right, so there we go. Now we're down on the first one. There's another one about yay high in this. And so once we kind of match there, you'll see this gap start to close up. And then that'll just kind of drop her on. And there we are supported. And there we are supported. <laughs> there, we, there we are supported. All right. So now we got it in. And that Technic frame is running down primarily into the basis gray. There's some Technic beams running across the floor that's, that don't actually do any cantilever work on the edges. That's all just plate work. And so it's mainly in this top area where all that structure is happening. Because this whole light gray area will lift off for one transport access to the battery pack. And also there's a little Easter egg and through this door, which I don't know if you'll be able to see at all, but it's a grunt birthday party. And that references a skull from the game Halo Reach, which is grunt birthday party. So when you actually take out one of these grunts, they explode in an array of happy confetti. <laughs> so you can kind of see them in there with a little cake behind. So. Excellent work here. Really appreciate everything that all of you guys did on this, and I think it really just looks fantastic here. Oh, I wanted to um, uh, show, I forgot to show this off, uh, but as you can see, right by the river is our, uh, our sig fig, says Odious Tees, um, just having a good old time. Uh, as you can see there, um, we have Daniel to the left holding a piece of meat, uh, Tanner with a bottle. And then Ben having a sip of a uh, sip of the old uh, uh, brewski, <laughs> and then finally you have me sitting there waiting for my chicken to be done. <laughs> Sounds good. I love that extra level of detail. You got to put yourselves in the build. Yes, yes, of course. Um, really one of my one of my personal favorites that I've done uh, is this scene of this corpsman with uh, uh, helping a fellow marine. Uh, lighting a cigarette with a broken arm, of course, and um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is, you don't see these kind of builds often, the, this slice of life um, vibe that this uh, build has. You know, usually you see like battle scenes, uh, fighting going on, but never like what they do a a in the meantime or in the background, so that is the idea that I had, and uh, I brought these guys. Uh, uh, I asked them last year, like, like, hey, you want to do a, a Halo build? And they're like, yeah, sure, <laughs> for sure, man, yeah. And really, I couldn't have done it without them. They are just, they did a phenomenal job, honestly. And and I'm glad, I, I, I'm glad that I finally got to do something Halo related. Um, because it's been sorely missed, I think. Sounds good. Thank you once again for, for the time here, taking us through this whole layout. You all did an excellent job. I also want to point out, if you want to pick up your trophy over there, they actually won staff oh, yes. favorite here yes. as well. So very, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank That's you. fantastic. A big honor with the staff here at Brick Fair. We've done this many years to win that. Yeah, you can all get in the shot there. Excellent job, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>